Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to look at some evaluating expression problems um, that we're going to be able to use our addition and subtraction formulas in a new way. So write the given expression in terms of x and y only. Cosine of sine inverse of x minus tangent inverse of y. Now this may look a little bit similar to some of the problems we had in chapter 6. Remember in chapter 6 we had problems like cosine of sine inverse of x or cosine of tangent inverse of y, but we never had a sum or difference like this. The reason is we didn't have a sum or difference formula that allowed us to evaluate it this way. But we're still going to proceed in the same way that we did with the other problem, just with some slight alterations. So recall when we had problems like this before, first thing we always do is we make substitutions. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in alpha equals sine inverse of x. So I'm not going to substitute in for the whole difference, right? Now before we always just made one substitution, so we just have to remember if it's a sum or difference, we're going to need to make two substitutions. And recall that from the definition of the inverse function, this means that sine of alpha equals x, and we also know that alpha is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right. Now we want to make a second substitution for beta. Well, let's call it beta so we can keep these two apart. Beta is going to be my tangent inverse of y. Now I don't need to do negative tangent inverse of y, and in fact I don't want to do negative tangent inverse of y. We're going to take this care of this negative in a different way. We're going to take care of that when we actually use our difference formula for cosine, but we want to just use the tangent inverse of y all by itself here. So recall that by the definition of tangent inverse, what this means is that tangent of beta is equal to y, and also we have that beta is strictly between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, now we're ready to move on with the problem. Now the first thing we need to do is to make triangles. Before, in the chapter 6 version of these problems, we only made one triangle. But here we're going to need to make two triangles. We're going to make one triangle for alpha, and we're going to make one triangle for beta. Now for my alpha triangle, I'm going to take the information I have about alpha. I know that sine of alpha equals x, so my opposite side of this triangle, opposite of alpha, is x. My hypotenuse is 1, and my adjacent side is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now looking at my beta triangle, I know that tangent of beta equals y, so that means that my opposite over adjacent is y over 1, and my hypotenuse then is the square root of 1 plus y squared, or 1 squared plus y squared from Pythagorean theorem. Now that I have this information, we're ready to solve the problem. So cosine of sine inverse x minus tangent inverse y, this is equal to, with our substitutions, this is just cosine of alpha minus beta, where alpha and beta are the angles that we have in the triangles to the right. So we get plugging in to our subtraction formula for cosine. This is cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus, remember when we have a subtraction in the argument of cosine, we have addition on the other side. It's going to be plus sine of alpha, sine of beta. Now we can plug in for these functions using the triangles that we have on the right. So looking at my alpha triangle, I see that cosine of alpha, that's my adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is just going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. Cosine of beta, looking at my triangle down here, this is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, or 1 over the square root of 1 plus y squared. 
plus. Now sine of alpha, we know this one really quickly. We can look at our triangle, figure it out. It's opposite over hypotenuse. But we already have sine of alpha, don't we? Sine of alpha is up here. This is our substitution. So sine of alpha is just x. Sine of beta is my opposite over hypotenuse, or y, over the square root of 1 plus y squared. Now putting this all together, we have a common denominator here. So our final answer is all over the square root of 1 plus y squared. And in my numerator, I have the square root of 1 minus x squared plus the product xy. And we're done. Here we've written cosine of sine inverse x minus tangent inverse y as an algebraic expression of x and y only. Okay, so this is how we would do this problem. Again, very similar to what we did before, only now we have to be a little bit more creative, make two different substitutions, and then once we have our triangle set up, we can apply the addition or subtraction formula that we need and use those triangles to plug in for the values of each of the functions. Now let's take a look at a numerical version of this problem. Find the exact value of sine cosine inverse 1 half plus tangent inverse 1. Now I'm going to say at the very beginning, the way I'm going to do this problem the first way is not the easiest way to do this specific problem, but it is the surefire way to do any problem of this type. Notice that I have values 1 half and 1 here. So we can evaluate these inverse functions, and we'll go ahead and do this at the end. But if I had something like 5 sixths and, you know, 4 fifths, you know, something along those lines, those aren't values that we can evaluate our inverse trig functions at very easily without the use of a calculator. So we would need to use this double triangle method. So this problem is just to practice the double triangle method. I just chose some easy numbers uh, so we can set up our triangle quickly. So let's take a look. I need to make a substitution first. So my first substitution, let's let alpha be cosine inverse of 1 half. So that gives us that cosine of alpha is equal to 1 half. And we know that alpha is between 0 and pi. Let's let my second substitution, beta, be tangent inverse of 1. This gives me that cosine of beta, oh, sorry, tangent of beta. is equal to 1. And of course, I know that beta is strictly between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So now I can set up my two triangles. I'll have one triangle for alpha and one triangle for beta. My substitution for alpha gives me that cosine of alpha is 1 half, so my adjacent is going to be 1, my hypotenuse is going to be 2, my opposite is going to be the square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared, or in other words the square root of 3. Now setting up my beta triangle, I have tangent equals 1, so my opposite over adjacent is 1, so I can just write 1 and 1 here. And then by Pythagorean theorem, I have that my hypotenuse is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, or just the square root of 2. Now we should recognize these triangles. Notice that this first triangle, this is our 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the second triangle is our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so again, I said this is an easy example. We're going to continue on in this method, but then at the end, we'll see that when we have these easy numbers, we can really just kind of plug and play. So continuing on, we have that sine getting our final answer here, sine of cosine inverse of 1 half plus tangent inverse of 1. This is equal to sine of alpha plus beta with our substitutions. So then using my addition formula, this is sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. Now plugging in, looking at my first triangle, sine alpha is root 3 over 2. 
cosine of beta is 1 over 2 which is the same as root 2 over 2 cosine of alpha is 1 half and sine of beta is 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2 so we get a final answer here my common denominator between these two is 4 they both have a denominator of 4 on the first term I get root 6 on the top and in the second term I get root 2 now we've seen this a couple times before in the last few videos but let's take a look at it a little bit differently um, like I said with these specific values we know what cosine inverse of 1 half is and we know what tangent inverse of 1 is in this situation we can really just plug in and find the answer now uh, in most situations on a test you'll get something a little more complicated 7 eighths or 11 twelfths or something like that where you won't be able to just evaluate directly but notice here that cosine inverse of 1 half we know that cosine inverse of 1 half is 60 degrees or pi over 3 tangent inverse of 1 is 45 degrees so we're going to get that this is sine of 60 degrees cosine 45 degrees plus cosine 60 degrees sine 45 degrees okay and, and we'll get exactly what we had up here so again this is the short way to do it if we have values that are friendly for any values whether they're friendly or not we can always use this double triangle method to evaluate these expressions and get an exact value alright that's it for section 2 so in the next video we'll be starting up 7.3 learning some new trigonometric identities we'll see you there